Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm excited to bring you the chat logs on John Baker. Now, John Baker, now this is actually the only image I could find that was decent for John Baker because this is on one of the unaired episodes. He got to the Sting House, Hansen wasn't there, and he was arrested after. He did have an interview with the Murphy police, but that's as far as it went. This is the guy that said that women are my vice. He used to work at a church and he had an affair with a married woman and he was married at the time too. But luckily for him, none of the men in Murphy got convicted. And there's actually not too many videos on him. Like I said, this is an unaired episode and I might be following up if people have an interest in it. I might be following up with an investigative video or two on this individual. So I just did a FOIA on him recently, maybe like four or five days ago, and I got back an 18 page report. Let's take a look at that. So a a lot of the stuff you're probably not going to be interested in. It gives some of his information. John Edward Baker. Address is 7549-811 Stonebrook Parkway, Frisco, Texas, 75034. But this, of course, was back in 2006. It goes on with some of the information about the different parties involved and the evidence that was found, like a Motorola Razor and Bailey's, and Bailey's alcohol, a couple other items. Looks like he was driving a 2001 Mitsubishi Spider. The license plate is redacted. The address it was registered to is 10207 Belfort Drive, Frisco, Texas, 75035. His Texas driver's license gave the address of 9400 Wade Boulevard, number 2122 in Frisco, Texas, 75035. But he indicated his address during the booking process to be the Stonebrook Parkway address. Now, while this isn't important information that has to do with this thing, I thought this was kind of interesting. It says the interview was video and audio recorded on a VHS tape. Paul Stein of a company called Street Vision, a subcontractor of Dateline NBC, recorded the interview on the department's VCR while he recorded it on his videotaping equipment. I remember in one of the videos, I don't know if it was Joey's TCAP or it was Mr. Gigi or someone, they were talking about uh, something like, did NBC do the recording? So this is actually the first time I see this in the report. Paul Stein of a company called Street Vision made this recording. Maybe it was only this one, maybe it was all the ones in Murphy, I, I don't know, it doesn't say. So it says, I advised the arrestee of his rights. He acknowledged that he understood the rights and agreed to talk with me. He told me that he is a pharmacy tech at the CVS Pharmacy in Frisco. He has worked there a week. And I believe it said in the interview, I think he said he worked there four days, but close enough. It says, prior to that, he worked as an associate minister of music at the First Baptist Church in Frisco. He had to resign from the job because he had an affair with a married church member and he was married at the time. He and I discussed the chatting that he was doing on Yahoo Private Message. He acknowledged that he knew she was 13 years old. Oh, and hey, before we go on, big shout out to my patrons. I truly appreciate all the support. If you're interested in ABLE, I have two levels of my Patreon. One is at the $5 level, and that allows you to support the channel and also gives you early access to one or two videos a month. The other is the $15 level, and that gives you access to early released videos. It gives you access to direct chat, and it gives you access to all these documents documents that I get on FOIA, all my notes, everything that I notate down that's not even included in all the videos, some ideas that don't even turn into videos that I've taken notes on and done research on, it's all there. And if you're not able to do that, do me a favor, hit that like button, it helps get the video out there, I really appreciate it. Alright, moving on. He continues to acknowledge everything he said to this 13 year old girl. I don't think I need to repeat it here. It's much like all the other Predator chat log. You can see it on screen if you need to. Now, they did ask him for a consent to search his computer, but he didn't actually give the consent, which is weird because he just laid it all out to the detective. Yes, I knew she was 13. Yes, I said all this sexual stuff. Just acknowledged everything, but no, you don't get to search my computer. And he didn't want to give consent until he talked to an attorney. You know, that's something to think about, too, because if he was willing to sit there and just lay it all out to the detective, yes, I knew she was 13. Yes, I said all these things. But no, you can't look at my computer. It makes me think... What's on the computer? That's troubling. So here are the chat logs, and I don't usually read out the whole thing. These are just excerpts. So there might be missing points here, but this is what they thought was important enough to put into the report. She clearly says that she's 13 years old, female in Texas. He says, are you in the Dallas area? She says, yeah. They go on to talk about that a little bit. Now keep in mind that the conversation starts November 5th, 2006 at 2.27 p.m. So he talks about location with her. She doesn't initiate anything. She says that her dad is getting ready to go to work. And he says, so you'll be alone soon. They continue to talk. Another one that said he's never done this before. Okay, so remember the chat log started at 2.27. Just 33 minutes later, he's, I want to see your breasts. And she says, oh yeah, smiley face. 
And he goes on to say what he would do with them and that it would be their secret. And he goes on to say, it's illegal for me to be with you. It's really good that he acknowledges that. And this is what really kills me, that these unaired predators really didn't get a lot of recognition because these chat logs are just as bad as the others. And you have this guy here that he knows that she's 13 years old. He knows that he can go to jail, that he can get into a lot of trouble for this. He knows these things, and he still does it anyway. There's no claiming that, oh, I thought she was 18 or something, because he specifically states that it's illegal for me to be with you. So there's a few more lines of sex talk. It goes back to location, what he'll be driving, and same day at 3.22 p.m., he leaves to go meet this 13-year-old girl. Now remember, the conversation started out at 2.27 p.m. It shows 3.22 p.m., less than an hour after meeting this girl, he is shutting down his computer, getting in his car, and driving to meet her. And he has stated on more than one occasion her age, he has stated that he knows it's illegal, and he does it anyway. So there's a couple more pages left, but that's essentially the end of it. And I think I'll leave you with that. I'll go ahead and put this in the VIP section of my Patreon. I hope you all liked the video. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of the day, and just remember to verify everything.